Hello there, my name is Kraken and welcome to another tutorial. This time we'll be dealing with a fog slash smoke uh, type stinger transition. And we're gonna start just from scratch. The only thing I the only extra thing I have is that I have put in the logo that I will be using. So let's head into the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve 16. Uh, go under the effects library. Go under effects, drag in some fusion composition, tell it how long you want it to be. I'm going to set it to six seconds. I said minutes last time because I'm a bad boy. Um, but now we have a clip, six seconds long. And now we actually have the ability to build this transition. So now what I usually like to do in the beginning of any transition or anything really in uh whenever we're working in the fusions tab is make a uh transparent uh background here just uh make it into a from background here and drag the alpha all the way down there you go you now have a transparent background for your entire background now what we then need is two merge nodes right here next to each other we need a transform node we need a fast noise node and then we need our logo and all of this set together we then do a little thing like this we connect the media in which is our logo into our transform uh, this transform will then dictate how large this will end up being. So if we do something a little bit like this, we can collapse this and fill this out a little bit better. We can size our logo to be right there. In the middle, filling almost everything out, but just barely. So, now, to the fog or uh, smoke, if you will. Now, the fast noise will produce that. That is all it will do kidding what it also will be uh, be providing is a mask for our logo meaning that this entire thing will follow our um our fog or smoke whenever it fades in and out now isn't that brilliant um now that's all said and done all we do now is work on the fast noise and what we want to do with the fast noise is actually we want to set up the detail so it looks nice and crisp. Which honestly it it does look nice and crisp no matter what, but it adds a little bit extra uh detail, oddly enough. Now the contrast I like to pull all the way up so that you really get some hard edges and it really looks like someone has been like just on on a on a mirror or a window. Uh, rather a window, I'd guess. Uh, so what we then need to do is that we need to go in here under the color tab of our fast noise to change it into a gradient. And from there, we need to change this black pin. What we want, we want the black pin to be transparent. Why we want it to be transparent? Well, it's so that we can see everything in the background. Isn't that cool? Now from here, what we can then do is that we can set the uh, the offset of this entire ordeal. The offset for, for this, uh, it changes the intensity of the fog or uh, smoke, if you will. Um, what we want to do with it currently is that we want to turn it way down so that everything is transparent. I want to do the same down here. Now, somewhere in the middle of all this, we want to turn it... Did I say down before? We want to turn it up. Now we want to turn it down until all of the little bubbles that we can see sometimes, like up here, uh, right here, we want those to be gone. We don't want to look at those. I mean, probably turn it down a little bit extra, just in case. Uh, and then you want to take the next part where you actually want to... Turn it back down. Just make sure that you've got it all right. And then, technically, you're done. 
and go to the delivery tab and just tick this out. There you go. There's your transition. Now, if you want to be all bit fancy, what I'll show you you can do is that you can change the angle. I wouldn't really mess with scale because it becomes a bit much to a certain extent. Uh, but what you can do is you can change the angle and you can choose the seethe. I actually don't know what seethe is referring to. But it is doing a lot of work that I otherwise don't have to do. So what we can then tell is that we can do, let's see, in our current climate. Let's turn it, uh, I mean, it's somewhat halfway, right? So let's set it to about here. So we have the seethe for that. Uh, so let's turn it to be that kind of seethe and that kind of angle from here. And then from here, we reset it back to zero. So what we then get is this. Get the one we got before, but then whenever it turns back out, it's different. Or if you just want to change it up even further, you can do that. Uh, I mean, during the whole thing. Whoa. You can do that too. It is entirely up to you, but currently this um is uh is actually a finished transition. So the only thing that's left to do is to give it a name, choose a place where to put it, set it to uh render individual file individual clips, go to the format, select QuickTime. Go to codec, select GoPro Cineform. In the type, you really have to be aware here because it will start you off on the U, uh, YUV 10-bit. Now, the issue with that is that you are missing an option down here. You don't have export alpha. You only get that with the RGB 16-bit. And you need that alpha. You need it. You really do. Um, Pre-multiplied straight, in my experience, which is limited, but it doesn't matter. I usually just use pre-multiplied, but you add it to the queue and you start the render, get it going for this particular computer that real quick took a total of nine seconds. And for a total of making this, it took just about eight and a half minutes until now where I'm about to do the outro where I am telling you that thank you for watching. Hope you've learned something. Hope that you are potentially going to use this. If you do, write in the comments. If there's something you didn't understand, write in the comments. If you are totally lost, write in the comments. You found it useful, write in the comments. If anything, honestly, write in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. Bye.